Thank you for watching the World Community Magazine's Hour of Power Live on Facebook with your host Edward McQueen and April Garner. And good evening, good evening to everyone today, September 12th. Uh, I'm your host, Ed, uh, Ed McQueen, of course. Sister April Gunn, the co-host here. Welcome you to uh, WCM Live today. Um, question is, April, first of all, how you doing? I'm great today. How are you doing? <laughs> you answered pretty slowly. He said, I'm great today. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like a second job, so I've, I've already worked my bread and butter, and now I'm putting in a little community service, okay. <laughs> so by the time I'm done, this will probably be, what, a 12 or 14 hour day, so, yeah. Wow. Wow. yeah. Well, I'm sure the community uh, welcomes that, and the community is appreciative, uh, hopefully, uh, about your community service. You've certainly <laughs> been doing a good community service, i got to say that. <laughs> we, yeah, so, we both have. We've been tag teaming. Right in the month of September. You know, uh, mm. April, the month of September is uh, Food Safety Month. Yes, it is. Okay. To, so to all of our um, restaurants and especially our food trucks, which is a number of them around and doing a great, fantastic job, um, remind you that September is a Food Safety Month. So today we want to talk about the risks and the legal requirements uh, involved. And so that poses the question. Uh, for our restaurants and fast foods, are you ready for inspection? <laughs> so, you know, and as usual, we always have guests uh, that could uh, address these questions like that as much as possible. And uh, today, April, um, I'll let you introduce our guest, if you don't mind. Well, actually, we will let him introduce himself, but um, it's yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop our guest onto the screen, Dexter Mitchell with RS3 Academy. How are you doing, Dexter? Hello, uh, April. I am well. How are you doing, Brother McQueen? Yes, sir. Fine, brother. What about you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to know you well. Yep. Uh, yes. So, uh, so Dexter's joining us today because, as Brother Edward said, it is National Food Safety Month, and uh, part of Dexter's uh, work and career uh, is rooted in the food service industry, and uh, all of the experiences have come together to create quite a platform for uh, teaching businesses and educating employers and employees on why food safety is so important. And also, there's a customer service aspect to what Dexter does that is um, equally as important because, as we know, if uh, they're lacking in, in great food safety practices and lacking in good customer service, more than likely they're not going to survive as a restaurant uh, and or survive in the food uh, industry. And so Dexter is here today to talk to us about, um, you know, his new endeavor and also, you know, introduce to some uh, and reintroduce to others the RS3 Academy. And so Dexter, why don't you start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself, explain what the RS3 Academy is all about. And then we'll get into our topic for the evening. Yes. Uh, so, again, I'm I'm Dexter Mitchell. Uh, I've been back in the area for about a year, but previously was here for about 15 years. Uh, originally from uh, South Georgia, Valdosta, Georgia. Grew up in Valdosta. Went to college in Atlanta at Morehouse and met a a uh, young lady from the area, and uh, I dipped my toe in that uh, water, <laughs> and so uh, I am a uh, Grand Strander, or uh, so to speak now. So, uh, yeah, I've been in the area for a minute, and, uh, and so I've done everything. I was a religion and philosophy major at Morehouse, uh, got, was licensed in the ministry actually about 30 years ago, this October will be wow. uh, 30 years that I officially, uh, October 31st, 1993, I preached my trial sermon and then went back to Morehouse and uh, changed my major from uh, uh, psychology to religion and uh, been preaching 
for at least, well, was preaching before then, but officially preaching mm-hmm. for the last 30 years. So uh, that's the background, but uh, got in the restaurant industry uh, in college, you know, work your way through school. But when I got to the Grand Strand, was a church planter with the Southern Baptist Convention, worked at uh, a church here locally, Myrtle Beach Community Church, and planted a church. Uh, Kim, my family, and I, we planted a church at Coastal Carolina. And as a church planter, I also had to work uh, bivocationally. And so met a guy who had just gotten a a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And uh, he said, "I I wanted to do marketing for his restaurant, but he said, I think you would have a lot of fun as my director of hospitality. I said, I don't know about restaurants and especially fast food restaurants. And he said, Chick-fil-A is different. And he was not lying. And so that was in 20, 2000, 2010 that we endeavored in that Chick-fil-A. And six years later, I had worked in three different Chick-fil-A's. And uh, so that was my introduction to the food industry. So. Wow, that's mm. fantastic. But uh, you, um, I, that, that was quite a journey, Deborah Dexter. Yes. Quite a journey, man. Um, so it, it, it must have been some impetus or something that um, uh, drove you to this jump from ministry, uh, from ministry to wanting to get really, get, get out there really into practicing entrepreneurship like that. So, Brother McQueen, it's interesting. What I thought was ministry 30 years ago (laughs) actually became a a moving target, if you will. And so what the way I look at what I do now, I minister in the marketplace by serving our community in business and entrepreneurship. And so I'm still a minister. I'm just not in a pulpit. I'm just beyond the four walls of the church. And so I'm serving the community in a more uh, dynamic capacity, I think, that utilizes all of my gifts and talents, as well as my uh, affinity for business, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, The interesting thing is, right after I got licensed, the ink was not even dry on my license certificate. And I took a job at a mega church in the metro Atlanta area. And so I walked in the church my first day on the job with my Bible in hand and, you know, was looking to do what I had learned to do in my small town in Valdosta, Georgia. And it was different dramatically because when, and I, in my first meeting at that church, we talked about mobilization. We talked about marketing. We talked about management. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is not church as I knew it. And so it was an introduction to the business of ministry that sort of catapulted me as it relates to thinking about ministry in a business setting, if you will. And so it was a natural progression once I made the transition in the Chick-fil-A world to continue what I had learned at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, which was in Decatur at the time. <clears throat> and so it was a natural progression brother to answer your question that's uh that adds to the value of your your <laughs> your characteristic be yeah. the character of you okay yeah. uh and congratulations on to that um yeah. so uh, coming back to to conway do you find it a, a, a challenge to um kind of administer both uh, not at all. Not at all. In fact, uh, RS3 Academy is the crossroads of all of my experiences. Um, so about three years ago, it may be less, I had an opportunity to consult an individual who had just bought a chain of pancake houses. And so we talked about doing HR. And so as it relates to that capacity that I served in, I had to get all of my certifications 
for surf safe and that was surf safe uh manager training food handler i had i was even trained as a bar manager and i was trained to train the entire staff and so once that job was over i still had those certifications uh fast forward getting to conway back to conway i saw an opportunity because the surf safe requirement that DHEC requires for all uh, managers and owners of a food uh, retail establishment, I had already been trained. And so what I recognized, the opportunity was the classes that were offered to teach those certifications were all in Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach. Uh, rarely were there classes that were hosted in in Conroe, and so I saw the opportunity, uh, and there was the birth of RS3 Academy. We've been teaching a monthly class to certify managers since June, and every month uh, moving forward. So we did it in June, July, August, and we've got our September class coming up uh, the 25th of September, all at the Cypress Inn uh, Conference Center right downtown Cone. Wow, wow. So obviously you must have seen the need for for, for those type of, uh, for that type of instructions. Okay. Before, before my website went live, I received a call from a, a, a restaurant at the beach actually to come in and teach their entire management staff the certification required by DHEC for manager certification. So that was on the spot. Six uh, individuals before the, the the website was even live. So, man, man, I, I, I see. I can't even fathom something like that because I guess because it's not my concentration of <laughs> of effort. But uh, unless April has something else to say, um, you know, you know, you have a lot of there are a number of food trucks, not a lot, but a number of food trucks that. You read this, uh, I see on display when we have events uh, in the Myrtle Beach area and Conway, and Conway, and they seem to be doing quite well. Um, what would you, what do you have to say to them in terms of them um, uh, meeting the risks and the legal requirements for um, getting appropriate inspection and passing inspections, so to speak? Uh, Brother McQueen and April, so the narrative is this and I was kind of in preparation for the show, talking through with my wife last night. Uh, you know, I was raised and reared by my grandmother. Uh, God bless grandmothers. Uh, and so one, one thing that grandma always told me, don't eat everybody's cooking, <laughs> but we go to restaurants like nobody's business, yeah, which is yeah, the yeah. same concept However, we get to rest assured that there are requirements by health department to regulate those restaurants. Yeah. And so that's the difference, <clears throat> if you will. Uh, you know, if you go down the street and eat at your neighbor's house, there's nobody coming in and, and making sure that they're washing hands and doing the proper things that are necessary to hold the food and all of those things. But we think because we are in a business environment, somebody's regulating those requirements at the, the food establishment. And so that is what BHEC is all about. And when you come in the door with regards to what we're training and teaching them, those are the same things that are happening when the health inspector shows up. And so our approach with, uh, RS3 Academy is to ensure that those establishment, establishments are ready for the health inspector when they hit the door by their systems, their processes that happen every day to, to ensure that they're health inspection ready every day. Not necessarily just for the health inspector, but for more importantly for the customer that they will see on an ongoing basis. And so that's what our training and our whole development plan is around. 
ensuring that they are health inspection ready. And you said that earlier, are you ready for the health inspector? That's kind of what we uh, trademark ourselves as it relates to making yeah. sure that they're health inspection ready every yeah. day. Can imagine. April, I'll let you jump in whenever you want. Uh, well, um, Dexter, I think that, um, you know, you're actually in the, the right place to have this type of um, initiative, of course, being a tourism industry. And, um, you know, you, you talked about all the things that we um, typically uh, think about when it comes down to the the food service industry. I know I'm a big restaurant ratings person. Uh, uh, you know, when I walk into a restaurant, the first thing I look for is their restaurant rating. Even if I'm going to a, you know, a place where there's a drive through and I just want to pick up even a, a, you know, a cold pop or something, I want to know what the restaurant rating is. And so like in our um, prep for the show, I was telling, you know, we were talking about the fact that a lot of people take those types of things for granted. And yet, um, you know, you kind of enlighten me on what these restaurant ratings mean and, uh, you know, how often they occur and, you know, what the restaurants are actually liable for when it comes down to things like that. So, you know, I think as we talk about mastering safety in the food industry, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I hope will come across in this broadcast uh, is that, you know, when people are handling food, whether it's in a restaurant, on a food truck, in a convenience store that has a food service counter, and, you know, there are a lot of pop-ups that are doing, you know, um, these little, um, you know, like hot dog carts. Some people are cooking from their homes and things like that. Food safety should be uh, laced with universal practices regardless of how you're doing it. And like Brother Edward mentioned earlier, you know, there are legal requirements that underpin all of this. Um, the risk factors can be grave. In other words, people can uh, get ill if the food is ill prepared or, or not, you know, cooked properly. They could die from that type of thing. Um, and so your service is needed from the standpoint of making sure that people are truly educated on how to handle food properly, how to make sure their kitchens are clean and, you know, everything in between. So that, you know, whenever they are releasing a product from um, their cooking or prep areas, it's something that they can be proud of and something that people can, like you said, rest assured or safe. Uh, it's safe. So, you know, as you think about some of the things that you've encountered, what are some of the most common occurrences you see in the food industry that, um, you know, restaurateurs can easily correct? What are some things that they, they typically you know, kind of take for granted in their everyday workings that uh, you are able to educate them on as far as how to correct those things? So entrepreneurship is a, a dream, right? Uh, that many people set out to uh, uh, conquer, if you will, or get established in their lives. And so you think of what can I do? I have this ability, I cook or whatever your, your narrative is as it relates to your entrepreneur journey. And if that's in the food in the food industry, you, you, you get out. You, and so business is hard. Restaurants hard in particular because of all of the things that are required. There's marketing. You got to make sure the people are there. There's the food. You got to make sure it's cooked. And then there are customers and all of these things that are, uh, are on your, your checklist, if you will, as it relates to ensuring that all of these things are, are in place. And wow. so at the top of that list, there needs to be a structure and procedures, first of all, to ensure that everyone is safe and preparing things uh in in a in a safe manner if you will and so food safety has to be at the top of that list as it relates to uh hand hand washing uh, a large percent a percentage of the training is all about personal habits mm. i've spent a significant amount of time ensuring that at the top of mind is your personal habits uh 
making sure that there are protocols for when uh, uh, employees are sick, making sure there are protocols for uh, when you go to the restroom, you are, everybody's seen the sign, we, we wash our hands here, but there needs to be somebody policing those things in the restaurant. And so mm -hmm. we put the onus on the management and also the ownership for making sure those things are done. So there are five things that DHEC says that are happening everywhere they, uh, they the, the most violations they see are food temperature holdings. So when, when you go to a buffet and you see that line, there are strict guidelines to what the temperature should be on that bar. In addition to the holding temperatures, there are cook temperatures. So when you see that chicken that coming out at Chick-fil-A, at uh, Popeye's, at Maryland's Fried Chicken, I love some Maryland's Fried Chicken, <laughs> they have to ensure that they cook that those foods to a certain temperature to ensure that they are ready for consumption. Uh, I won't get into all of the terminology because you know it won't make anything uh, a difference here. But to their their temperatures for beef, their temperatures for all of the different items, not only cooking temperatures but holding temperatures. Uh, there are you can't just go. I can't go to Food Lion and buy my chicken and bring it back to the, the restaurant and just start cooking. Mm. There are approved sources. Uh, and then I've got to, you've got to make sure that you're cleaning everything properly. There are temperatures that are required for your dishwashers, your uh, sinks, the hot water that's in your sink. And so there are a lot of things that you add to that list when you're you, you, when you're going into the restaurant business, brother McQueen, you got a question? You're on mute, bro, um, brother Edward. You're on mute, brother Edward. I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, yeah. So if if one uh, if a restauranter or a person that sells chicken, uh, say, like you just mentioned, uh, bought his chicken from a place like Food Lion, raw chicken, right? Uh, takes it back to the restaurant. What must be done to to, to meet the requirements and ensure that is? It, can't that, be that done. it should not be done. Oh, it should not be done. It should not be done. Uh, here's the, the one of the logics behind it. So oftentimes, you hear of recalls. Recalls happen not only in the car industry, you know, uh, Ford will have a recall. There are recalls on food. And so if there is a recall on, let's say, chicken, on wings, recall on wings, and you purchase your wings from the food lion, it is hard to trace the the, the 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 source that those wings have come from because Food Lion has a different set of standards for how they receive wings and how they put them out for 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 the consumer to buy them versus an approved source. They they've got different guidelines. The approved source they've got when you purchase a, a, a box of wings from a, a U.S. food or a Cisco, you get not only a track record of what you've purchased, they, they track all of your purchase from the first purchase you ever purchased with them. So first of all, there's track records, then they know where they have gotten that food from all throughout the company. And so it's easy whenever someone comes and says, I bought some wings from your restaurant, I got sick, you can then go through the protocol to find out how to trace the particular food that was served on any particular day. And so it's, it's not recommended that you go to Food Life or, uh, and I don't wanna 
uh, call out food lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, but yeah, I think what you're saying is not recommended for yeah, like a restaurant to actually purchase their food from a food lion to prepare for public for, consumption. For, that's for that's retail, more like yeah. For, yeah, for retail, yeah, for retail establishments. Um, right. And that's why they have uh, large food uh, sellers or food distributors like um, I don't know who are some of. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, Mm -hmm. U.S. foods, um, those are the major uh, ones. And and in some cases, the uh, wholesalers, you know, there are certain items you can get from a Sam's because they have a uh, uh, restaurant division or a business division in those environments. But yeah, so just off the cuff, just those five things uh and then I, I mentioned four of them but the fifth is what's your protocol for your staff and so mm. you've got to have in place not just on the spot you know what happens when someone is sick how do you uh make concessions for someone who's sick and then depending upon what are their symptoms and so depending upon what those symptoms are, mm-hmm. uh, you some people might not be able to work at all, uh, depending upon what they're sick from because of how contagious and uh, the ramifications that those uh, sicknesses have in a food environment. So uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a lot and it's a, it's a steep hill to climb. But I love when I get a, a few weeks ago, uh, and and I'll mention proudly, uh, C W wings and ribs. I had uh, eight of their uh, employees in the two different restaurants, and all of them passed that uh, that that day with. Uh, uh, with the with the course and the examination, and they did phenomenal in terms of uh, number one uh, engagement with the content, and then uh, making sure that they were right at, at, with re- with regards to the exam. They 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 championed, it. and then uh, I'll mention Bandinos you know, at the beach. I mentioned that before I even uh, launched our site. Uh, we had six of, of their employees, and the majority of them passed as well. And so the engagement is high when we're in those environments, when we're teaching and we're talking about what is necessary uh, for uh, what they are doing on a regular basis. And so we really want to emphasize whenever we're in those environments, uh, the ramifications of when they are not doing what's in, what is required and what happens uh, if they don't do it correctly. So uh, it's National Food Safety Education Month. Mm-hmm. And so the National Restaurant Association back in 1994 saw the need to bring awareness to what they do. Uh, they are the certification home of all of, I mentioned DHEC for South Carolina. Uh, it's a different place for every particular state. Uh, they have a different name, but it's your local health department. Mm-hmm. Uh, the National Restaurant Association sets the standards. They do the research. They work with the Food and Drug Administration. They work with uh, CDC to track foodborne illnesses. Uh, every year in this country, about fifteen million, fifteen billion dollars is spent on foodborne illnesses, whether mm. it's sicknesses, whether it's loss of uh, wages, whether it's loss of uh, product. Fifteen billion dollars annually is lost because of foodborne illnesses. And so, that being said, that's a lot of people get sick. That's a lot of people, uh, you, you, everybody's had that experience when they've gone out to a restaurant and uh, eventually noticed that they've gotten food poisoned. Mm. Uh, not everybody, but I'm just hypothetically speaking. And so with that being said, it only takes one person 
to come back to your restaurant and say, I've, I got sick. And that's once all. you report that, that's all. they have to make a call to the health department and say, hey, this is what happened. I'm just putting you on aware, letting you know what's going on so that if someone calls and reports it, you've already self-reported. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because you, you, again, you want to be safe. You want to make sure that all of those things are important. And so I, I know I've gone a long way. You asked me a question in April and, and those five things that I mentioned are the main thing that DHEC are looking for when they come in the door. But that is a microcosm of all of the things that uh, need to be looked at on a regular day-to-day -day basis. And so again, it is extremely important that you are proactive in your food safety protocols, if you will. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be a part of your very fiber, the way you do business. Um, it can't be, oh, let me just add something. It's got to be lock, stop, in step with how you receive food, how you put it away, how you prep food, how you cook food, how you hold food, how you clean up. All of those things on a day-to-day -day basis are monitored very carefully when DHEC comes. There are 22, at least at the count as of last month, 22,000 food retail establishments in the state of South Carolina. And DHEC shows up on a monthly, on a quarterly, monthly, and annual basis to all of those 22,000 uh, food establishment uh, retail operations. And they regulate it. Now, I mentioned that I, I have a previous background working with Chick fil A. The bar was so much higher in that environment. It wasn't the health inspector that I was concerned about when I was the manager on duty in the Chick-fil-A environment. It was Chick-fil-A's own internal audit that was more strenuous than the health inspector. And so you wanna make sure that your bar is high and your standards are high because these are people's lives that are at stake. And it's, you wanna do business at a higher level than what's required. That's that's just my thinking about it. So I think it's a it's a lot to consider when um, you are going into the food service industry. And um, you know, I think that when it comes down to um, you know deciding that you want to be an entrepreneur in this particular industry. Um, you know, those are things that really you should be proactive about as far as your plan and on how you're going to uh, ensure the safety. And so, um, you know, one of the things we talked about was the fact that, you know, you mentioned the serve safe certifications and other things that people can do to make sure that uh, even their employees are shored up and they really understand everything um, that the restaurant is liable for. So if, you know, if there was someone out there who was thinking about going into the food service industry, um, you know, what are some of the things that they need to do before they open the doors, before day one, um, when they unlock the doors and, and, and invite people to come on in? So call DHEC immediately. I mean, and because what's going to be required is an application. And then they're going to want to know your menu, everything that you plan to offer and your plan for how to do that safely. Um, and so uh, we don't, when I walk into a restaurant, uh, now I do, I, I, it's, it's, it's hard for me to just be in a restaurant and not, you know, go to shop, if you will. Uh, my family just, they, they shake their head because I'm always I think we were at a restaurant, we were at brunch the other day and my wife ordered something and it had lobster in it and it was at a fair market value. And I was like, hmm. And sure enough, she didn't get a lot of it because it was priced 
at a price point. I was like, yeah, I was thinking how they going to do that at that price point and make money. You know, so my mind is always thinking about, okay, the price, the cost, you know, how they're fixing that. And so you need to sit down and be very, very intentional because whatever you say is what the heck is going to build the, your plan and your inspections around. If you say you're going to have uh, burgers, you're going to serve burgers. Okay. Are you going to serve burgers and you, are you going to offer them rare? Are you going to offer them medium? Are you going to offer different temperatures? Or are you going to cook them all at well done? Just that detail alone. They ain't going to tell you how to do it, but by you deciding whether or not you're going to offer different temperatures that you're cooking burgers or not, that changes the entire complexity of how you receive them, how you hold them, how you cook them. If you're going to cook a medium rare, you're going to tell me that determines whether or not they're well, medium, or, or, or rare. And so that's a different layer of inspection that you will encounter when they come out to inspect you. And so, again, uh, if you're, if I'm counseling someone, we, what do you want to do? Let's talk about it. Let's let's be intentional about uh, how many people you, you're planning to have in your restaurant to help you do it. Uh, all of those things come to bear when it comes to making those decisions and doing it safely and at the end of the day, profitably. You want to make money. And so you you got to think about uh, if you're at offering a dish, how much can I make from that dish? How you lay out a menu determines how profitable you will be because if you serve, if you don't sell enough of a certain dish that is your highest price dish, then you got to decide whether or not I want to continue to have this on the menu because I'm buying this product and nobody's buying it or it's costing me too much to make it. And so there are ramifications that could be endless as it relates to making those decisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a question um, from uh, our viewer. Do you offer the courses to the general public for anyone wanting to become certified? Sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't, what, what was that look like, you know, just from a general perspective? So there is a manager course, and there's a food handler course. The food handler course is not as in depth as the manager course. The manager course is is uh, is quite thorough, mm -hmm. and as it relates to, first of all, it's an eight-hour course, so it's all day, and then is a ninety-minute uh, exam, ninety questions. Uh, so that one is the the the, the deluxe. Uh, addition, if you will. The food handler is more of a three-hour course, uh, 40 questions, maybe 45 questions. Uh, and so that one I will recommend to, to the general public. But uh, YouTube, uh, Google, are all your friend. Those That same information is right there for the public consumption. I, I mean, you can just look on YouTube and type in food safety and it will give you all of the different videos, people talking about it. And even some of the courses that uh, are offered are offered online uh, via a YouTube uh, uh, version, if you will. You just can't get certified uh, by going through YouTube. You've got to literally be certified by someone who has been certified, who has been uh, trained and certified to certify you to become a uh, an instructor and a proctor, if they, that's what they call it. All right, Brother Edward, um, you muted Brother Edward. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, sorry, sorry, my apologies on that. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Dexter, you've got a wealth, of, a wealth of information that, and I'm not hopefully, I'm hoping that our viewers could, uh, could take that, and especially viewers who, people who uh, have food trucks, Something like that because there's a number of them around, um, and uh, uh, the food food trucks and you know and, and all of our restaurants, 
uh, because uh, food safety impacts everybody, you know, and uh, with your information that you are uh, spelling out there today, and hopefully we'll, uh, if you have some new developments, you can come back on again and, you know, and, and let us know what, what uh, uh, things that you've uh, encountered or researched on and, and that you've been educated on uh, to keep us abreast of that, you know. So I, I, I'll add to what April asked earlier about uh, how would I counsel someone who's going into the business. I, I would recommend a team. Build you a team of people. Uh, teamwork is the dream work. Yeah. Uh, we are, we come alongside uh, and we make the business owner, we make the manager the, right. the hero of our uh, business narrative. Uh, so that's what we do as it relates to serving. We want to be your partners in this effort uh, to help you create those systems, create those procedures, because it's not just a one-off. It's not just a, I take this exam, I get this certification, you know, it, you go get it and then you get, you're done with it. No, it has to be a part of your culture, your, your, your business culture, your company culture. And so that kind of transitioning into the, the customer side of it. And so I think it's all the service. It starts with customer service. And so what is customer service? I actually, I've got a definition that I uh, took time to uh, write out with regards to customer service. And I talk about the customer service team. The customer service team serves as the first point of contact with a company or a business. They have the job of communicating information about the company's product and service. The customer service team has the responsibility of taking orders. They assist customers with transactions, transactions and receive complaints and other information and updates. And so customer service, that's the, that's your door, the, those are your ambassadors. They are the Absolutely. first people we see when we come into your door. Absolutely. How do you want to represent yourself right. in, a, in the best light possible to give off the, the, the great culture that you want to establish for your establishment. And that, that goes hand in hand. That, that's not only a restaurant, that's a retail uh, apparel shop, that's a shoe store, uh, that's any uh, environment you, you want to do that. But in particular, with regards to, and so DX or a part of the training is are your are their uniforms clean? Are they groomed? Are in addition to the hand washing aspect of it, we they they look at the the tidiness of the people like dirty aprons. No, if if it's soiled, we need to change those out and put on some clean ones because those things affect. The, the food hygiene, if you will. What, 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 now, what, about, what about the nets, man? On, 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 on women's hair. Hair, the hair, hair, hair. Is, a, is a harbor for bacteria. My, my so doctor said the head has to be covered. Yeah. Uh, you, that's why you'll see a lot of hats. Uh, back in the day, there was a whole lot of hair nets. Not as much hair nets now. But they still, they're still hair nets. I, I've been in a part of staff where I've passed out hair nets. Because people want, didn't want a hat or something along those lines, but more more accepted today are hats, gloves. My goodness, R Reggie Dice. Yes, my. Uh, <laughs> Reggie gloves. said gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but so there is no touching of uh, hands on the food that you uh, a customer should consume, if you will. Now. There are stipulations with regards to prepping. If you're prepping some uh, food that will be cooked immediately, there can be hand touching of that food because it's going into an environment that's going to kill off those germs. But it, I still recommend gloves in that in those cases. There, that is a that that is the only area where there could be some wiggle room. But that I still recommend gloves. In, in those environments too. So. Wow. 
you know, it seems like you're touching based on everything and that's very sensitive to a lot of people. Especially the people who are watching, but who don't bother to comment or send in comments. You know? Well, uh, I, let me tell you, I, I remember the day uh, when my uh, Chick fil A, the owner that I worked for, when he walked in the restaurant and he went crazy because there was trash on the in the parking lot, there was paper on the uh, lawn, and he was just anal with regards to the grounds because all of those were a matter of the culture that we Alex, but even more so, uh, running top notch operation. And so cleanliness of the, the rooms. Uh, my wife this day don't go to, it's got to be up to regards to clean. So, uh, clean, the parking lot clean. Uh, is it uh, when you walk into the dining room, are the tables not wiped down? You know, we've all had environments that we walked in, and those things. And so, those things are signs that other things may be uh, out of out of place as well. well. Brother Edward, I tell you, this is some extremely important information, and it makes you want to just, you know, kind of take a a, a long hard look at the restaurants that you visit. And um, yeah, I was having a conversation with someone, and again, I go back to my restaurant ratings, Dexter. And um, you know, I was talking about the restaurant ratings, and the person said to me, "Well, I don't know that I ever pay attention to the restaurant ratings, but I certainly do pay attention to what the restaurant looks like when I walk in." To Dexter's point, if there's you know tables that haven't been busted, foods on the floor, especially if you have a line of sight to the kitchen. And you can see what's going on back there. If the floor looks, you know, greasy or grimy, and um, people pay particular attention to the bathrooms and you know all of that, you know, they're like, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I just I can't do it. I can't dine in a restaurant like that. So you know, aesthetics are everything too. And I think it all kind of plays into the idea that if you are, you know, um, take pride in, in the way your establishment looks, hopefully that translates into you also take pride in and how you cook and that you probably are adhering to some strict food safety, you know, practices as well. So this is really good information. It's something that you think. So, uh, you know, we, we did have this little thing called a pandemic that happened. Uh, and that dramatically affected the restaurant uh, industry uh, for good in some cases. And, uh, and we are still officially recovering from it. Uh, at, I, I don't think we will ever be right, and when I say right, uh, with regards to the, the labor market. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is still, we're still recovering from labor. It's just the work ethic is not the same uh, that it was when I was coming up. Uh, and so I, I'm speaking as a manager who comes into contact with uh, a lot of uh, young adults and teenage uh, workforce, if you will. And so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can't do certain things. You can't talk to, uh, you, you've got to create a team environment that is uplifting and that is different than oftentimes I, I, my wife is in education. You, you, can't do the same things. You can't paddle kids anymore. Right. You can't discipline, and so you know it's it's more challenging, if you will. That being said, that's still one of the things that you've got to consider as it relates to if you're going into this this industry. You know how are you going to recruit, uh, and so how are you going to ensure that when you recruit them, that you train them, mm -hmm. because. You can't just put them in an environment and expect them to do well. You've got to train. Uh, and so it's a lot. And mm -hmm. so I, my hat is off. I am, I am not suggesting 
that it's easy. It is not easy. It is extremely difficult. That's why I recommend a team. I recommend sitting down and really thinking through and get help. Think through what you want to offer on that menu because that the ramifications are endless as it relates to what you've got to do to be ready to to provide that level of service that is going to create an environment that people will come back again and again. It's one thing to get them in the door, but to get them coming back. And, and listen, every day people are making food decisions. Mm -hmm. Every day. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's just easy when you know, you know what, I'm going to go here because they are consistent. I can get in and get out. That affects what we eat. Mm -hmm. And so you want to, you know, you, you don't want it to be difficult. You don't, if you can't ensure that you can have something on the menu every day, regularly, don't put it on your menu. Because right. if you put it on your menu and then you say, we're out of it, I came here last week and y'all was out of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why is it on your menu? You know? Why is it on your menu? Well, well, you man, I hope a lot of people are listening. <laughs> I, hope, I hope a lot of people who own restaurants are listening true. to this. This is true. And, and, then, and then so that is, that's going to put the, the customer in a bad mood. Then they going to say something to the teenager that's back there. The teenager going to be like, oh, why she all in a bad mood? Cause she trying to order her food, and the stuff that y'all say is ready. Well, I can't help because it ain't back. I know you can't, but you know, I, and I know we're shooting you just a mailman. But mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that is that all plays into the environment that you set that you don't even realize that it's speaking volumes about who you are and what type right. of establishment that you're in. Absolutely. And so, uh, those items uh, are, are extremely important. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, um, you know, you've given some excellent advice here tonight. You've talked about what the RS3 Academy is all about. It's the National Food Safety Month. So again, you know, when promoting this, it was anyone who's in the food service industry, you'll want to hear this tonight. Um, but more importantly, there's some uh, information that I'm sure you want everybody to know about as far as what's happening in September. Uh, Brother Edward asked the question, is your restaurant health inspection ready? And again, um, you know, you have a certification course that has come up. You mentioned that a little earlier. Uh, so why don't you mention that again so that we can let our viewers know, um, you know, how they can get in on this offering that you have. September 25th, uh, the... Cypress Inn Conference Center. Uh, they partnered with us. In fact, they will have two of their staff members at this upcoming course. I've got some uh, food truck people that will be here uh, this um, coming uh, month as well. So September 25th at the Cypress Inn, that's an all day affair. It's from 8 a.m to 5 p.m. I've even gone, as I mentioned, to restaurants and provided some uh, customized training for your staff there on site. Uh, and then hopefully the next time I'll be able to uh, talk about, I'm getting ready to partner with Ori Georgetown to provide some customer service training and some additional, uh, the food handler course, which is that lesser uh, not as uh, long, the three hour uh, offering as well. And so uh, we've got that. And then uh, every month or for the last, every week for the rest of the month, we will be um, uh, featuring a different aspect of uh, food safety uh, as it relates to what the different aspects of those five different things, those risk factors, we've highlighted one of those for every week in the month of September on our website, on our Facebook page, and uh, I'll post it on my personal page to get that information out there as well. So here it is, Brother Edward. I've got the uh, website up, making it real easy for you to uh, log in and register for those courses. Yeah. You can visit them at rs3academy.com. Uh, there's a list of the certifications that are offered, FAQs, 
uh, registration form and just flip through and see if there's some, you know, uh, training that you need and not just employees, but employers, you know, it's important for you to invest in your employees uh, by, you know, getting in touch with Dexter and letting him know uh, that you need this training for your restaurant or establishment. So um, this is really good information, excellent information. This is also listed in uh, the latest version of the uh, Rural Community Magazine. Okay. Yes, and it is. I believe if you go on our website, I believe you'll find it there. Yes, you will find it there. And Dexter is a guest columnist. Okay. So right. read the article, um, food right. safety articles and customer service articles that he will uh, uh, publish with us. And this is just excellent information. And this is the only part that's going to be free, by the way. So I hope you got it tonight. 99. <laughs> $3.99 tonight, but uh, everything else you have to register for because you are earning a certification now. This is not, you know, child's play. You're earning a certification, something that you can carry with you just about anywhere, right, Dexter? Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can monetize it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Right, well, Dexter, Dexter, yeah, it was a pleasure having you with us tonight. Great information again. Uh, and as Brother Edward said, if you want more information, want to read more about uh, what Dexter does and all of the great advice that he has for you if you're in the food service industry, uh, visit WCMMagazine.net. But also you can check him out at the uh, website, which is RS3Academy.com. For more information, you can contact him. Get in touch with Dexter and his team. And um, you'll be glad you did. Right, Richard Dyson? <laughs> Thank you all so much for having me. I've enjoyed this conversation. Well, the, inf the information was valuable. We have to have you on for something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It impacts, ev impacts everybody. Yes. Yes, sir. All, yes. Right. All right. Thank you, Dexter. Thank you. All right. Bye. And God bless. Well, brother, that was some wonderful information. I'm telling you, anybody who's thinking about going into the industry, they need to get all of this knowledge firsthand so that, you know, when they go in, they can say that they have everything they need to get started and uh, they'll have all the best practices. They'll have the training. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out here that, that, you know, who could really use this service. So I hope that they reach out to Dexter. Especially and, our, our, yeah. our truck, truck, food trucks. And, um, and mm -hmm. I applaud, applaud our food trucks. They've been, they've been phenomenal. They provide a lot of good food, I understanding. I mean, and obviously because they've been popular for a while. Whenever yeah. you, yeah, right whomever the entrepreneurs of food trucks. Yeah, it's a, it's uh, a great way to get, you know, yeah. to, to uh, it's a very creative way as well to, right, right. Um, you know, live the dream. So, yeah, do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Do it right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, to our viewers, thank you so much for um, thank listening. You for yes, Brad L. Beckman oh, from Columbia, you. loyal viewer. Thank you so much. And Yvette Pope from Charlotte, North Carolina. We really appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back next week, 7 p.m. with another great show. Stay tuned. Watch for the promotions. And if you have a great show idea, please hit us up at World Community Magazine here on Facebook. Or you can go to our website and send us a message or just drop me a message. Uh, via Facebook, and I'll be sure to get it to Brother Edward, and we can talk about how to bring more great information to the community on topics that uh, are important to you. So, um, this is Brother free information. Edward. Free yeah, information. <laughs> you love that line. <laughs> <laughs> that is <a> free. <laughs> love that line. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I hope that everyone uh, has a wonderful rest of the week. Okay. Yeah. We'll see, you see you next week. week. God Absolutely. bless. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching the World Community Magazine's Hour of Power Live on Facebook with your host Edward McQueen and April Garner.